All right, the recording has started. Hello, ladies. Hello, Hi. how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Great. So we have an exciting uh, session today where it's just the three of us. <laughs> we get to answer some burning questions that we got in from our founding members. Cool. Um, and for those of you who are just joining this week, I'm Lauren and I'm the Director of Development. I'm Allie, I'm the Director of Marketing and PR. And I'm Tosca, and I'm the founder and CEO of PassionFlix. Awesome. Um, so it was really awesome having Celestine and Jeremy join us last week. So that great. So fun. How much I love them. So, <laughs> I, I love them. They, and they just, I mean, like, they made me cry. <laughs> I know. I watched we, it back. I really had fun on that episode. We've yeah. been super lucky with, like, the last four or five movies having just really solid gem actors that yeah. just love us it's so great yeah i mean i think we have we have gem actors from all of the movies but the ones no, in the last sure. four or five are, are coming back and chatting with us now exactly <laughs> that's what i meant the ones who have come back and chatted so far they're just great we definitely got a couple of fans asking if we could have emma rigby on so maybe oh we could that'd be amazing that. she's not on any social media but i'll send her a text message yeah send her a text see what she yeah. says um so awesome i love her yeah she's amazing and i miss her there's a really cute picture on my Instagram from when we were filming The Protector. She oh, sat yeah. on my lap when we were on the boat on the Thames. Uh, <laughs> and we, just, we got a candid shot of us smiling. It was really funny. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we got, we got a ton of fun questions from people and I've sort of organized them into questions for all of us, general passion flicks like questions, okay. questions specifically that I thought you could answer best, Tosca, questions for Allie and then questions for me. Great. Um, about our various departments. So, and the first one, <laughs> the first question I'm very excited about, Kari asked this, and a couple of other people asked this as well, but she had it pretty specific. Um, she wants to know, how did Lauren and Allie find out about the jobs at PassionFlix? And Tosca, what were your initial thoughts about them from the interviews? <laughs> so I thought we could each talk about- uh, Wow. Well, we um, yeah. Found PassionFlix, and then you could talk about- <laughs> first thoughts about it. <laughs> yeah, I think you guys should probably answer that. How did you guys find out about the, the jobs at Passion Flix? <laughs> I say well, that because we don't. Right. right. Yeah. Um, I'll go first. Yeah. I, uh, I found Passion Flix pretty early. Um, so it happened back in, so back in, <laughs> probably too much info would be that in 2016 was when I graduated college, May of 2016. That winter, I was in Idaho with my family for Christmas because my uncle lives there. And I was watching a bunch of Christmas movies on Netflix, <laughs> just kind of absorbing any romance I could get my hands on and trying to figure out what I would do next in the industry because I had just finished doing the Mindy Project and I didn't really know what my next job was going to be. And I watched The Christmas Card, which was on Netflix at the time, and A Christmas Kiss, which was also on Netflix at the time, and um, uh, Joni Kane, our, our, one of the original founders, had been the writer on both those movies. And my mom, <laughs> I love my mom, <laughs> but I hate admitting that it was kind of her inspiration. But she was <laughs> like, you should reach out to specific credits. Like you should find the name, look them up, see if they have social media, see if they have an email listed and just reach out to them and ask for coffee or whatever. And I was like, you know what, you're smart. Yes, okay, I'll do that. So I Googled Joni's name and she was talking about this company called PassionFlix, which was just starting like all their social and just starting all this stuff. And I was like, wait, is this a romance streaming service? Because I've been wanting to do something like that for years. Like I'd been thinking like, oh, we need something more like the Pride and Prejudice adaptations. There should be a channel for historical romance adaptations. I was like, I'm determined that the BBC needs to do something like this. Um, this is a long-winded answer and I'm sorry to be. No, I love it. It's great. <laughs> So I reached out uh, on the Facebook page. I found the Passion Flix Facebook page. And I think it was at a time when both you, Joni, and Gina would get notifications whenever someone messaged. And someone had, I think it might have been you, looked at it right when I messaged. And I <laughs> sent my little like, hi, I'm Lauren. Uh, here's my resume. I work in film and I love romance novels. And I don't know if you're hiring, but I would love to work for you. Um, and that was in February of 2017 that I did that. And I got a response right away saying, here's our info email. You should follow up with that. And we're not hiring right now, but we'll keep in touch, blah, blah, blah. So every month or so, I would email the info email, just like, hey, 
checking in, hi, checking in. And eventually Joni herself started responding from her passion flicks email. And so I got to be like, oh, I love your movies. <laughs> it's so nice to talk to you. And she was kind of like, oh my God, this girl's so cute. And I, I believe that she started talking me up to you and Gina saying like, if we need an intern, we should totally do Lauren because she's been really nice and really, she's really eager. Um, and then, uh, for people who don't know, we're recording this uh, the week before it releases. And uh, today is the three year anniversary of when Gina called me, <laughs> and I saved the voicemail, uh, when Gina called me offering uh, an interview for a job at Passion Flicks. It would just be an internship, but she was like, we have dogs and we have kids and we have hugs and <laughs> we're just full of love and we'd love to create an environment where we can all work together doing something we were passionate about. And I was like, <laughs> super excited um so I called back and I set up a meeting with you guys I think it was later that week I met you at the coffee bean near where you lived because there was no office at that time no and you and Gina came Gina had her dog um and I was in a I remember I was in a skirt one of my old green blazers <laughs> my old interview outfits that were the same everywhere and I had my little binder with my like a notebook and my resumes and I sat down and you guys chatted with me and I guess you liked me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Here you are three years later. Um, but you offered me the job, I think kind of on the spot, um, to come in as an intern and then as a PA for some of the films. Like it just it was kind of a fluid open position, whatever was needed. And I think the first thing I did was or helped organize the PayPal and founding member list. Founding members. I remember. <laughs> Which you was came in, you'd come in and, and you had um, and you were sitting at my dining room table. And it was basically me and you, and I was like deep in the stress of trying to raise money for Passion Flex and get everything off the ground. So we were yeah. still, you know, building the site and negotiating deals with, um, with, um, with the licensing content. And um, we'd only filmed one movie at the time. We'd filmed um, Hollywood Dirt. So I was trying to edit that while raising money, while um, trying to get um, Afterburn, Aftershock, um, uh, off the ta uh, uh, you know, off the ground, and um, and then you came in. I was like, okay, this is great. Listen, I need you to help me organize founding members. It's yours. Go. And I and I think that you've been the founding member liaison basically ever since. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, which is great. Was, I love it. It was fun. Really it was really that, cool. And we worked, on. we worked out of your home at the time, and it was just like this inclusive environment. And Margie came over and showed us one of the first cuts of Hollywood Dirt. Yeah. <laughs> I also got to go to one of the the sound spotting sessions or one of the ADR sessions and you put me in the booth and I'm pretty sure that either sex noises or like a little girl <laughs> giggle in another line are something that I did. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Made it into the movie. We still didn't know each other that well. And yeah. I, I remember making the sex noises. It was for the two women who are in bed with him after his crazy. Yeah, in bed with Cole. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. And that's large boy. Afterwards, uh, Tosca was like, that was really good. And I was like, I, I can't believe this is my job now. <laughs> <laughs> but it was um, great. And Johan came in and was hanging with us. And, and Ben, Benny came in as well. Uh, yeah, Ben, yeah. Great people. That was really fun. It was fun to meet people. And then, um, and then one last thing was that my first set was Afterburn Aftershock. Yeah. PA. And film school had prepped me for kind of knowing what every department was and knowing what you know, some of pre-production, what production was, but I, at that point, had never used a walkie-talkie, which are, yeah. it's your bread and butter on set to use a walkie-talkie. That's how the whole set runs and how everyone communicates, and so you need to know the right language of, like, copy that, uh, <laughs> gotta go 10-1 or 10-2, which is two different bathroom codes, <laughs> um, <laughs> and just things like that, but that set, I learned more on that set than I think I did in four years of film school. <laughs> that was a great set. That was so much fun, and Plus, that's the first time that we met Tyler and we worked with um, um, Caitlin. Um, it was, um, yeah, that was a really fun set. I enjoyed making that movie. I wasn't supposed to be directing that movie either. I so remember, yeah. It was a very I odd time. Those phone calls with different it, directors, yeah. It was just last minute. Um, and, you know, we had a, a little bit of a difficulty with the director that we were working with. And um, un unfortunately, and then fortunately, I got to direct it. And I was like, all right, great. Well, here I go, directing this movie three weeks later. I love it. It's awesome. Great time. So yeah, that's, well, I'm very grateful to have you here. So thanks for sharing that story. What about you, Ali? <laughs> it's very different. It is. Yeah. Well, um, so 
I was pregnant with Daisy when I first heard about Passion Flicks. It was before the launch because I had Daisy in September of 2017, which is when Hollywood Dirt came out. So I, I don't remember how I found out or where I read about it, but I was so excited because I'm like, yes, I'll be on maternity leave. I can watch romance. This is great. <laughs> um, so I signed up right away. I um, And then somewhere along the lines, I decided, because at the time I was working for Icelandic Glacial Water, a bottled water company, and we do a lot of product, or we did a lot of product placement over there. And I think, Lauren, it might have been you that I spoke with first, but I'm like, hey, let's see if we can get some water on some of these films. Um, and so I reached out and chatted with Lauren, and then we sent water to the set of The Protector. Yeah, in England. Was yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, so after that, I just, I, I really, I wanted in the company. I, I knew what I was, I knew what I wanted. So I reached out, I, t I asked Tosca if she would want to meet um, and just talk about some ideas I had for marketing and PR. And we met at Coffee Bean by your house. Um, and I just, I was so excited that day. I was so happy when I met you, even more excited about the potential to work for you. And I loved Passion Flicks even more that day. So, I mean. I got to meet your it, daughter and your husband. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had to come, yeah, I forget why he had to go pick up the car. I don't remember what, why he had to, oh, he had to drop her off there because he was going off to do a job. So, yeah, it was just a really fun day and we just stayed in touch because they, there wasn't a job posting or anything. It was just something that we kind of talked about over time. And then eventually the time came where I got to join full time. So, well, I think, I think um, both you and Lauren, um, but, but um, there wasn't a position. You guys created the position ultimately um, because I remember um, with, um, with, well, with Lauren, Lauren was just with us and, and, um, Const like at, on, on every film set and there was no position. We didn't really have the money to be able to afford a position. And then um, basically what happened was um, both Joni and Gina left Passion Flicks and it was just me left at the company. So it was me, me alone. Um, and uh, and uh, Gina suggested actually that um, Lauren um, come on board and, and work with me. And I was like, I desperately need some help. And um, so then I called Lauren and I said, hey, Lauren, I know it's a little different. It's not working on set, but maybe you can still. And will you come in and be my assistant? And um, we'd like, I'll work with you to do whatever you want as you grow and into this position. And now you're the director of development for the company and you get to decide what we make. But, um, <laughs> but it was, it was um, one of the best decisions I made is to bring you on um, as a full-time employee with the company. You're the first official person that I hired. Um, Margie was actually, Margie came in a week after you. <laughs> Although she'd been there a little bit longer. That is, oh, that's true? That's okay. true. There she is, far away from me. She is oh, six away from me. I'm sorry. Okay. Hi, Margie. People ask about Margie. Margie, you should come in and say hi. I know. I was like, well, I, yeah, she I, is. I was on way before Lauren was on. You were on way before me, but in terms of like, like, like on paper full time, I think I was First. That's what I mean. Uh, on paper, full time. You didn't sign your uh, contract until a week later. <laughs> <laughs> when that phone call happened, I was uh, really excited because I had been getting a little bit of shit from my friends for having worked for you guys for a year at that point and not being full time yet. But there just wasn't that. There, you guys weren't there yet. It was still so no. much of a startup that there wasn't payroll. There wasn't anything that could have accommodated something like that. And so. I yeah, was very excited when I got that each, call. Everything worked through each individual film. So everyone was yeah. working for each individual film as we're going until we finally were like, okay, we gotta, um, I gotta hire somebody to help me actually at the company. So that was, that was great. You hired me in July of 2018. Yeah. And then you went away for two weeks, I think because Kimball was getting married. And then, uh, and then you came back <laughs> and then you and your mom sat down and decided to film The Protector like over a weekend, you came up with that idea. And then I came in that Monday and you're like, cool, we're leaving for London in a month. And I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It started the, the whirlwind that it's been ever since. It's yeah. Cool. And then um, with regards to Ali, we were in, I was in New York filming or New Jersey filming Dirty Sexy Saint. Mm -hmm. And um, 
And Ali was just always awesome sending us water. And then she's like, hey, do you mind if I pitch you to a few different places and see if maybe I can do some marketing um, or PR, you know, uh, on my own time for, uh, for Passion Flex? And I was like, uh, sure, thanks. Um, <laughs> that's very nice. And then she's like, oh, so I have interest from the Today Show and, <laughs> and do an interview with you and do a day on the set of Dirty Sexy Saint. I was like, what? <laughs> Who are you? What is going on? This is amazing. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, and then you were like, "Okay, I'm gonna take a couple of days off work, and I'm gonna come and um, and come yeah. and be with you during that interview." And I was like, "You are the most amazing human being to <laughs> actually do this, like, without even working for us officially." And um, and then as soon as you came out, I was like, "So what? What, what about coming to work for us officially? You can come on, and we'll just create this position." And then I think, you know, uh, maybe two, a month later or something, you were yeah, not with even, us. Not that long. Yeah. 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 You gave in your notice and you came and you worked for Passion Flakes. And that's, and that's our family of four. There are four of us in the company. It's me, Lauren, Ali, and Margie. Um, and Margie, of course, I mean, look, Margie and I have worked together for years. I, I mean, almost 10 years, I would say, on different movies. Um, and uh, she was um, an editor on a movie that I produced called Holiday Engagement, which is a Hallmark one that's now on, um, I think it's still probably on Hallmark, but it's also on Netflix. And, um, and then after that experience, um, I went and, you know, I started um, directing movies for other people. And after I directed one movie, I was like, I'm gonna direct another movie outside of Passion Flix. This is before we filmed, we, before we started the company. And I was like, but the only person that can edit it is Margie, so I have to find her. And then I found her, she contacted me randomly at the same time. It's like, we just knew it was funny. very serendipitous. And, um, and then she edited Cinderella Christmas for me, which is also stars Emma Rigby. And, and, that, and then and Gina produced it. So we were like in this, basically this, this first little world. And while I was filming that movie, you know, Gina and I would be up in like the attic of the house where we're filming, speaking to lawyers and pitching investors and all sorts of things. And um, and Joni, just speaking about how Lauren, just tapping into how you found Joni, that's how Joni found me. She watched You Cast a Spell on Me, which is the first movie that I directed um, coming out of producing. And, um, and, and she contacted me and she goes, hey, I just watched your movie, You Cast a Spell on Me. And I really loved it. And I have an idea for us. I have the script that I, I would love for you to shepherd. Um, it'd be really nice to meet you. And I was like, oh, random message. But she was so delightful in how she contacted me that I was like, oh, wow, okay. And then I started reading the script. And I was like, oh, this script's really good. Um, this person can write. <laughs> and then, um, and then and we just kept talking back and forth. And we couldn't actually sell that movie because it was a little too spicy, honestly, for um for Netflix, I mean, for um, Hallmark or Ion or any of those guys that were buying at the time. And then Joni came out right after New Year's um, in late January, early February. And she told us um, about her idea for Passion Flicks. And I was like, this is amazing. This is fantastic. We should definitely walk, work together. And, um, and, and so that's how it all came to be. It's basically, if you see somebody's name on a credit and you reach out to them, you can awesome things could happen yeah yeah it's it, a lot of this this industry specifically filmmaking is through who you know yeah you have the gumption to go and get it <laughs> sometimes it works out in your favor exactly and sometimes it doesn't at all <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> um if anybody's curious about all the behind the scenes it's usually one of the four of us yeah um any email you get I'm, I'm not i've not been signing it as me so if there's no other lauren it's probably just me emailing you <laughs> about shipping orders or uh, subscription questions. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll continue to grow as time goes on. But right now, due to the pandemic, things have kind of slowed down <laughs> in that area. Um, but I love working with you guys. It's kind of fun having a little family. You know, you don't get lost in a big pond. It's just so collaborative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. It's awesome. We're very lucky to have a, such a great group. I'm very lucky to have such a great group of women to work with. <laughs> and we're lucky to have you you're a great boss <laughs> world's best world's best <laughs>
<laughs> oh, I love it. Um, and so we have a couple more fun questions as well, um, which are a little think think bombs. You got to think about them a little bit. Um, this first one is, what is one actor and one actress you would love to cast in a Fast Flicks movie? Do you cast anybody? What's one actress and what's one actor? <laughs> I know who Tosca's is. Yeah, I want Alexander Skarsgård. <laughs> He's, 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 I need him. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, and an actress, oh, man, there are so many great ones. Um, I, you know, um, um, Kate Blanchett. She might That's be a little, um, old for some of the Passion Flicks movies, but I'm, I'm sure she could pull it off. No, she's fantastic. Oh, she's She's so great. I started watching uh, Mrs. America, which is, I think it's on Hulu. <laughs> I don't want to be wrong, um, but it, she's really great in that. Of course. Yeah, she's, she's great in everything. She's great in everything. Um, I, I mean, I would love Jensen Ackles or any of the uh, Supernatural babes. Um, and I know that Joni and I kind of bonded over that too. She wanted to get Supernatural like licensed on Passion Play. <laughs> so we wanted yeah. to have a hot men section we should try we should try tea because that would be cool um has it netflix has it right now but if they ever let it go <laughs> they never let it go <laughs> try to stop it up. um and then for actresses uh if we're looking to get into more historical romance um lily james i don't know i loved her in uh the guernsey literary and potato peel pie society adaptation that's on netflix she was really great in that yeah so i think she'd be cool to work with <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Also, very, two impossible people. The three. Oh, yeah. For us to get. Yeah. No, we're going to preface this with this is pipe dream, but probably never going to happen. But these yeah. are the ones we're. Hey, picking. you never know. Never know. <laughs> Definitely Charlie Hunnam for me. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, good one. yeah. I love Charlie. He, he's, he's, yes, he's everything. I also um, love Headland. There's so many female actresses that I love, and I, I don't think I have. A solid answer for that yet. Um, yeah, I, I think I'd kind of be on the same page as you, Tosca. I think working with Kate would be a dream come true. Dream. Yeah, total dream. Total dream. So well, I'd have to go that way. Good answers, guys. <laughs> um, this next question, uh, Tracy asked, uh, she said, if you could make any romance book or a romance movie do-over, what would it be? Who would you like for the leading man? Do over. I know I could <laughs> even prep these questions that I couldn't think of this one. You know, um, I think that I, there is. Uh, we're very fortunate that we actually get to do all the romance books that we actually really love. So I'm I'm pretty happy with what with the current selection that we have. Yeah. Um, the, the struggle that I have is which one will I not do because it's just impossible for me to do them all, and I want to do them all. So um, that that's my dilemma. But I think in the future, um, a movie that I would love to do, I'd love to do a, a Jane Austen adaptation. Um, I mean, that sounds just really beautiful, although I, I don't know how I would compete with the BBC version because it's just so excellent. Fantastic. Um, so good. So, so good. good. It's so good. So um, I think just because I want to live in that world, and of, of course, I also love historical romances, so being able to do something historical would be awesome. It would be so yeah. cool. I would. I literally, I stayed up till 5.30 in the morning over the weekend uh, rereading a Tessa Dare series. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Books in the night, and I'm like, I can't do this. I should sleep. Um, but sometimes the book just grabs you and you got to finish it. Um, I, I don't have any off the top of my head that I would want to do over that have already been made, mm -hmm. except for the, the movie adaptation that made me want to get into book adaptations as a career. It was Aragon. <laughs> Garbage. <laughs> It's garbage. I don't know. I don't know if you read the book and loved it. I read the book when I was really young and I, A, was jealous that he wrote it at 17. I was like, I could be a 17 year old book author. I was like, insane. Um, jealous that he wrote it that young and that it got so successful. And then so I got the DVD over Netflix when it was still doing the DVDs, like right at the beginning. Got it in, as a DVD. <laughs> Didn't want to watch it with my family. So I watched it on the portable DVD player we had in my room. And I was watching it, and I remember like throwing my DVD player to the ground afterwards because I was like, "This was just too different. They ruined everything, and they took fun parts out." And I was very upset. So that was the day I was like, "They'll never make another movie that bad again." <laughs> if I have anything to do with it. So I love how detailed we are about the books. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, I would want to redo *Memoirs of a Geisha* because that's yeah. my 
favorite book. Um, and I thought the movie was beautiful, but I was still disappointed. Even though I loved the actors they had in it, I have had a crush on Ken Watanabe <laughs> forever. I have such a crush on him. Um, but I just wanted a little more from that. We had a, we had a, that's totally fair. And that's a very good choice. We had a couple of founding members uh, recommend uh, redoing, us redoing Fifty Shades just because it would have been more book detailed. Um, and then another founding member asked in that same like comment block, uh, would we ever do a D.L. James book? <laughs> I, was I like, mean, it would be a dream. <laughs> That'd be a yeah. dream come true if we yes, could. Yes, please. Yes, please. I'll do it all. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would be wonderful. You know, at the end of the day, I don't want to critique other people's work and, and what we don't know what the situation was when they go through. And it's really tough to make a movie and get a movie off the ground. And, and honestly, uh, the books in the romance genre, they are, um, they're risque. And some, some actors just don't want to do um, love scenes. They just don't want to do them. And so, you know, so I think there are so many things that we need to just, you know, um, step back and take a bit with a, a grain of salt and go like, okay, everybody did everything they could to create the best thing that they could for those movies. And I thoroughly enjoyed them. I'm a big fan of E.L. James. It would be a dream come true to make the mister. Um, so, you know, fingers crossed, something like that could happen. But, um, but at the end of the day, you know, you never understand, you never know the circumstances behind making it. It's not just, oh, I want this person and that person's going to do it. it. It just doesn't work out that way. Everybody has their own, um, you know, idea of how their career will go. And, and again, some actors just will not do any kind of um, love scenes or... Mm -hmm. Uh, and certainly if they're a little risque um, or a little, um, you know, sassy or sexy or, you know, a uh, little bit more uh, of a five on the barn, you know, then they, they get really, they get nervous because um, there is a lot of pirating and people do pirate it and then they put it up on various, uh, very un, uh, not great sites and, and it's, um, and it's the person's body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not cool. Not um, cool. Not cool but I totally get that. And yeah, it's, we should be building up more of the romance community than tearing each other down because there's, there's already not enough. Yeah. It's great that so many different people are doing it, um, that we can join a, an already growing community and help it grow more. Absolutely. I mean, I think, um, you know, we've discussed this in, in, um, at Passion Text in, in the office. To me, every single time somebody's out there and they're really going to do everything they can to do a true book adaptation of a romance novel, it doesn't have to be passion flicks. It can be anybody. If you're going to do the actual adaptation of the book and 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 you know deliver it for the fans, I love it. I'm I'm yeah. totally down. <laughs> Let's get more of them out there because we all promote strong woman communication, connection, um, removing shame from sexuality, you know, inclusiveness, mm -hmm. all these things. And so, it, that's that's our world, right? That's the romance community. That's romance books. So. I I'm highly encourage everybody to go out there and make romance. Ah, love it. Um, and uh, another question, uh, Christina asks, what type what type of romance genres are you looking forward to do more of, and any type you wouldn't do? Um, I'm waiting for historical. Historical <laughs> would be great. Would be great. Yeah. Allie, any other genres for you? No. Um. I'm I'm really excited about Wicked and and going on the paranormal side. I think that sounds pretty badass. So I'm just excited to see how it all comes together. I know it's a little hard, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I'm sure, but I, I think it's 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 cool, and I think it's going to bring in a lot of new fans to our community, and I like yeah. it. I'm super excited about Wicked. Um, and I'm really excited about, I mean, I'm excited about all of the movies that we have planned and we're going into different areas like suspense and, um, mm -hmm. and you know, you know, we're going in all different areas, but um, ultimately, yeah, I'd love to do a beautiful historical um, that we could shoot in Ireland or England or somewhere. And, um, and uh, those are just a lot more expensive for us to do, but eventually we could definitely, we should do them. Eventually it'd be great. I have a long list. <laughs> yeah. And okay. the only ones that I don't, I particularly don't want to make, um, I'm not a big fan of, um, of uh, women being abused or hurt. 
uh, and showing that on screen. I think there are a lot of other um, platforms out there or other networks that can show more of the woman in jeopardy type thing. So that sort of thing is what doesn't appeal to me. So if there's, um, you know, rape or, or woman being abused, that's, that doesn't, that's not something that we would do. Yeah, we got, we got a couple of questions asking if we would ever do a darker romance. Um, and I know that there's definitely a whole genre of dark romance that gets into more of like, not just the bondage, but like captor captive and all that other stuff. Um, those types of situations that don't super fit into our mandate right now. Yeah. Which is why we'll probably avoid those. But I, I, and I'll, I'll stick up to for the dark romance fans, because there are some dark romances that aren't necessarily, you know, I don't think we're saying no dark romance. I think we're just saying there, there are yeah. certain situations that we don't want to glorify and yeah. I think that's okay. Absolutely. So, yeah, a yeah. dark romance, I mean in our genre, um, most of those dark romances still end with a with a happy ending and and, mm -hmm. and they um and it's more uh, you know in even in those dark romances we still are dealing uh, the women still have consent mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's what it is uh, i i don't want to do a movie where a woman has no consent and she's you know that that's a that's a world that's not really appealing to me it's not something that i want to advocate for but um but you know there are some sexy dark dramas out the dark romances out there that you know we'll definitely tap into but um uh it's more abuse yep yeah, that's fair that's very fair um okay here's a fun one if there were if they were to make a movie about your life who would you want to play you <laughs> about my life <laughs> Charlize Theron nice good choice South African as well so it helps yeah, no perfect <laughs> I'd want um, A.D. Bryant, probably. I used to say Melissa McCarthy, but I think A.D. Bryant's closer to my age bracket now. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. I... So many people... I, I saw Laura Hopkins put um, Christina Hendricks, and I laughed, because I'm just like, I want to be this big, bodacious, voluptuous, bright redhead, so even though we don't look alike, or we're... we're close-ish enough to yeah. now she's a little bit older but yeah I'd say Christina Hendricks good, good awesome. thoughts Lauren yeah good she's pretty badass <laughs> yeah amazing yeah. um is there anything that you've taken from a movie or a book that you've added to your lifestyle yeah from most of the books that we've done and most of the things that we've done um communication so that is actually something that the more I read the more I do the adaptations and the screenwriting I'm, I'm i'm very active in actually in a lot of the scripts and, and screenwriting um that we we make but um the, the the focus is always on the communication part and and saying how you feel and not being judged for saying how you feel and so i have taken that into my life and i'm i'm a strong advocate for communication now yeah i'd have to agree with that i've definitely learned learned more of what compromises or what, you know, what communications go into relationships. Um, I haven't, I have yet to have my own relationship with a person romantically. Um, that's not to say it's never going to happen, but, um, and I've definitely tapered my expectations because I've had friends for a long time say, well, don't romance novels kind of give you unrealistic expectations? And I'm like, not like yes and no. They, they give me, if anything, something to strive for. Like, this is how I, do want to be treated or this is the give and take I want to have you know like it's it's little lessons you learn if you can learn from book reading oh sorry <laughs> I had an alarm on my phone um so yeah something like that is whatever. communication 100 percent for me yeah. yeah being a little more open about saying what you want and what's not what what you don't want in your life so. exactly it's key yeah. that's a good one um I feel like we already answered this question so I'm gonna skip it um and I'm gonna move to some general questions okay uh, which any of us can answer if we feel like, <laughs> we like the answer. <laughs> sort of like lightning round uh, more of your just general I mean some of them we can't answer uh which I've already I've already prefaced in our in our questions um so Elizabeth asks has there been any thought uh to releasing the driven soundtrack without the last song that we are waiting for permissions on well and it's not one song it's six songs got it um, it's six songs that are all one artist, and that's what we're waiting for. Well, it's one artist, but it's different people within that group. So it's an artist and the publisher and the various people that are involved. 
um, but it's six songs that we don't have the rights for. We have the rights for five. So we could theoretically release an EP, which is a small um, version of it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Anne asks, who is the new Colton? And Natalie, <laughs> Natalie Jones asks, uh, if we can't tell, when, when will we, they know? <laughs> Closer to filming, when, when we can, yeah. We have this really awesome way of uh, what we're going to do to reveal him, and um, he's really mm -hmm. excited about it, and Christy's really excited about it, and so is Olivia, so I'm just going to make that, Ali's, Ali's the one that, that got me into this whole, we have to do really awesome reveals, so I'm like, all right, well, <laughs> <laughs> able to film and you came up with the best idea so I yeah, yeah. it's gonna be fun let's it's worth the wait let's yeah. really make it fun and and cheeky you guys will love him and um and uh, you'll appreciate it exactly um yeah it'll be definitely worth the wait so patience <laughs> um will will the Gabriel's Inferno movie be on DVD when it finishes releasing on Passion Flicks and and we'll preface again for people who don't know or who, who are still are confused there's three parts of the first movie which is the first book so yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're releasing the first part this Friday yes <laughs> um, so will there be a DVD? Yes, down the line there'll be a DVD. DVDs take a lot of time on our end to make, um, and they cost a lot of money. But, um, so yes, uh, eventually we will have a DVD if it's up to Ali, I imagine we'll have it around Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I think we'll definitely do something like a pre-order again, just to make sure we, we get the right amount made. Um, so that, that'll, that'll come at some point. Um, and then, okay, this question is, when will you start casting for this man? Well, we've sort of already started, like, what's your wish cast, or you can make suggestions. And I think there's a couple of posts. There's a post for Jesse and a post for Ava in the lounge, if you want to find it. And you can mm -hmm. comment who you want below. That's how we're keeping track. Um, but have you and Jody talked any more about it, Tosca? We chatted a couple of times. We WhatsApp in the middle of the night, you know, because that's when our, our times are, our time differences are work. Um, and, uh, but no, we haven't really gone further because we don't know when we can film, right? right? So we were planning on filming in July, August of this year, but now we can't. So we don't really know when we can film or where we can film. Um, and it, so, you know, depending on what country really opens up and where we can find a beautiful manner, um, that's where we will go and film and then casting will be sort of based on that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, because it's, it's difficult. We can't get people in or out of countries. Right. So right. you can't even get me into England to film it. So, mm -hmm. so. everything's on hold right now. <laughs> but as soon as, you know, but you know, I've chatted with our casting director, Lindsay Shag, who does all of our casting, great woman. And, um, and I've said, you know, we should probably start going out there and just getting an idea of people who would be interested in it. Because obviously, um, Jesse and Ava are, are very specific uh, characters. And mm -hmm. the actors have to be, as I mentioned earlier, it's hard to find actors that would be that willing to be that exposed um, and really bring um, the kind of commitment and honor that we need to the story. And mm -hmm. so, um, so, you know, we, we probably will start doing preliminary conversations with actors over the next month. That's very exciting. <laughs> yeah. And I really appreciate all the people's suggestions because uh, quite honestly, we will take all of those suggestions and we will put them into a list and then we will look at mm -hmm. who's realistic. Sadly, Alexander Skarsgård is busy for the next couple of years, but we're going to ask. Mm -hmm. um, Charlie Hunnam, sorry, Ali is probably not going to do this role. You never know. Um, you never know. You never know. We can ask. <laughs> we can ask. Yeah. Hey, why not? Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, so you know, some of the some of the A list actors are are not available and, and mm -hmm. unlikely for us to do it unless we we maybe would just hand over the entire Passion Flicks company to them and say, here, you can own it to be in this movie. Um, but it's unlikely. Yeah, and then we've gotten some amazing suggestions, and I've had a lot of fun going around on Instagram and looking at many photos. Um, but just a, a friendly reminder, we do need an actor and we prefer a British actor. It's much easier for us. So although we love a lot of the suggestions that have come through with these stunning models that I now follow, um, <laughs> they're probably not the best fit 
for the yeah, Je Jesse is a complex character and the person that's performing needs to be able to really hold that complexity um, and and that presence and while models are beautiful to look at they're not um, normally very good at presenting themselves as actors that we need somebody with a solid background and I speak that way specifically because I know my mother who is a beautiful woman and wonderful model but cannot act at all yeah and we've had a couple of questions could we find a model and have them take acting classes but yeah. again it's just the yeah for that role especially you yeah. need experience no, acting classes are not going to give you years and years and years and years and years of in-depth experience or give you that um that real raw talent, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, totally. And we have uh, another question we have is, once filming can resume in light of some health and safety precautions that will have to be put in place for crew and cast, do you think founding member visits will still be able to happen on set? I really hope so. I, I love it when the too. founding members come. Yeah, um, if I mean, anything, we might just have to do smaller bursts than the bigger groups. Yeah, I think what will happen is we'll probably have to have a little bit more separation between um, where I am sitting at, at watching the monitor and where the founding members sit. Normally, you could be right next to me, but it might we might have to have some separation. The concern would be, of course, just meeting the actors and getting hugs from them and getting pictures taken with them. That's what's been the great thing about founding members in the past. Um, but I do think that in the next year or so, we'll be able to resume a lot of, um, a lot of that. Um, so I think at the end of the day, we, everyone just needs to be hyper aware of um, washing their hands. And yeah. So, um, yeah. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see what, what all the rules come out with. I know the industry is already prepping for any kind of, any, any way they can get started again. Um, so we'll see what happens. And that, that's it for my general questions. Um, right. So I got some Tosca questions. Oh. And looking at the time, we might not hit all of these, so I'm just gonna pick out some. <laughs> um, and so here's a fun one to start with. Christine okay. asks, uh, Tosca, in the movie so far, what lead would you play if you could? Um, and I thought we could also, we could each answer this if we wanted. <laughs> In the movies that we've already made? Yeah. Um, boy, I'd love to play Summer. <laughs> <laughs> like Hollywood Dirt. Um, but uh, probably um, my, my age le lends me more towards um, Josie Malone in The Will. Love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Allie, who would you uh, want to play if you could? Uh, Julia. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd probably want to be Riley, just because... Oh, I, I mean, they're all such great characters. Yeah, are, yeah. Um, but they get to be, she gets to be near race cars, which I don't know. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. You do love race cars. Although, what's, what's the friend's name in The Protector? Why can't I think of the character? That I, I love her so Heather. much. Yes, she did... Uh, that She's actress great. did such a great job, and yeah. that, that would really actually be the kind of role I'd want to play, I think, because I like... Yeah. She was so much fun. That was so authentic. Their friend was so yeah. fun in that movie. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think that that character, though, uh, Cammy as well, that's a great one, Camille. Um, yes. For, so basically, anything that um, Emma Rigby has played, I would, I would play. <laughs> okay. I love that. Um, that would be really awesome. Um, we already kind of talked about this. Mira asked how the idea for Passion Picks came about, which I think we touched upon with how Joni yeah. reached out to you. So we're good on that one. Um, Tina asks, you mentioned Passion Flicks wine and she wants to know um, how it will be sold. I, Cause I think she lives in a state that might be difficult to send wine to. Um, but that's yeah, also still <laughs> Sadly, I can't defy the laws of the state. Um, <laughs> But, um, you know, we're, we're going to do a soft launch um, and the idea is to, you know, be able to um, to send out a few bottles to some people um, just to, to get the word of mouth going. But right now, it's not going to be in stores. We don't have that kind of distribution ability. Um, so we would have it in, you know, something like a wine.com or something like that where they would ship it out. And, um, but, you know, or we create a members club something like what wink does cool 
very awesome. Um, oh, and here's a good question about cinematography. Uh, Melanie asks, well, she says, about cinematography, it seems that Dennis Maloney is your man with the camera. What made him stand out compared to others, if there were others in the running, and what um, does it become challenging to film love scenes without having the angles become repetitive? And do you look at the book description while filming? There's a couple questions in there. Yeah. <laughs> Dennis Maloney is my man. He's fantastic. Um, he's extremely experienced, and um, uh, and he truly loves what we do. He's a big fan of romance and he understands our mandate and how we make things and he really wants to make it beautiful. So I use, I work with Dennis because he will always make it beautiful. He'll just, that's his, that it's his special skill. Um, he's and, a founding um, member too. He, he says that every time. Founding member, yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's, he's like, oh, you're a founding member? Me too. <laughs> he's so <laughs> proud. He loves it. Um, and, uh, um, so, and when we shoot the love scenes, you know, we actually take um, very, uh, we take the, just the, the actions and directly from the book. So we actually write it down and, um, and write down, you know, what happens in the book. So, you know, the, for example, you know, the, the yellow dress sex scene in Dirty Sexy Saint is quite different to, um, you know, the, the sex scene in, um, uh, afterburn aftershock you know it's like they're they're, they're just different because they're written differently right. um and so um so what we do so we write that down and then i take uh, you should just see my phone it's actually quite embarrassing i hope my kids don't get it you know sometimes <laughs> yeah. some cloud cloud accounts like some of these pictures pop up on my kids phones um kids devices but basically i just go around the internet and i screenshot um different images from different movies or different shots and um and then i put them together in a in a presentation and i show it to the actors and i go these are the kinds of shots that i'm looking to get while we film and then i show it to dennis and then he um can sort of plan how we're going to be filming those things so it's like you know just just how close it's going to be but you know i don't i i find it a challenge every single time we do one of these sex scenes and i don't find like that i'm doing the same thing um I think uh, each time, each time there's a new sex scene, I'm like, oh my god, this one's going to be difficult. Let's see how I can make this one happen. And then you try and come up with um, different shots. But you know, at the end of the day, I've always got to have the ab shot, and that's 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 my thing. My signature is the abs, hand going down the abs. I got to have it. <laughs> it's it's. it's we great. love you for it. <laughs> um, and. Uh, we have another question. Uh, Tosca, thank you so much for sharing the process of making these movies. As a filmmaker, do you think you have your own formula when it comes to filmmaking, or are you always striving for new ways to reinvent yourself as a director? I don't think I need to reinvent myself as a director. I, I don't strive for new ways to, um, to direct movies different from you know, me, but each, each time I do make a movie I've learned so much from the movie before and from everything that I've done before and the stories you know for me the the most important thing is how am I telling the story and am I am I being true to this particular book and this story and what is important about this story compared and I don't compare it to anything else it's just that I target the um the essence of each individual story to make sure that that's what I'm capturing so mm -hmm. So that's that's my my mandate. My priority is focusing on the book adaptation and working with the authors to make sure that I'm actually bringing their vision to life. Love it. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and another question: Gina asks, "Does SR make a cameo in Gabriel's Inferno?" Unless SR is a founding member and I don't know about it, my <laughs> my assumption is no. No. <laughs> yeah, to our knowledge. They never visited set, <laughs> um, but they got constant photo updates and they were very excited about the whole process. Um, Jan asks, do you think you'll go to Boston for any of the scenes in Gabriel's Rapture? Is Boston open? Let's go. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, maybe, I don't really know right now. Right now it's most likely um, still Syracuse and and Italy, that's that's where our focus is. But um, we'll see what Massachusetts is like moving into the next uh, next phase of filmmaking. Sounds good. And if you end up, um, if you guys end up going to Boston, I know a lot of interns from Emerson who would be down to join set. <laughs> Wonderful. 
um, which is my alma mater for people who don't know Emerson College. Um, and Charlie asks, Charlie's one of our founding members in London. She's really sweet. Um, she said, Tosca, would you consider doing a dinner slash hangout with founding members when you're in town for filming? Yes. Um, and I think she's one of our, she's one of our newer founding members. So she, she might not know all the details of what happens on set visits. Cause you, <laughs> sometimes you sit down and have lunch with them during our lunch break, which is really great, but maybe yeah, a dinner or hangout. Could be cool. <laughs> I'd love to, you know, if I'm filming, the only problem is, you know, our days are incredibly long. It's normally 12, 14 hour days. And then I have to come and still work on passion flicks. So it's a little hard after filming for me to go and meet everybody. But if it was a weekend or before shooting, then Great. Yes, I'm down. That'd be awesome. Cool. So I'll, I'll work on that. We'll see what okay. we can do. <laughs> um, and those are the questions I have for you, T, that I thought you could answer best. Now I have a couple for Allie, which okay. are less fun. And I'm sorry in advance, Allie. Um, uh, <laughs> Allie, Kathy wants to know, will there be any green Kincaid shirts for sale? Uh, like any Dirty Sexy Saint merchandise? We will. We're we're going to work on getting more merchandise for our other movies. This, um, you know, with the situation we're, not, we're in right now, it was best for us to focus on Gabriel's Inferno since we have that premiere next week. Um, and, and it's also difficult for us to get in there and ship them out because for those of you that don't know, when the orders come in, Lauren usually handles all of it by herself. So it's it's quite a lot of work um, and we try to get them out as fast as we can. And um, yeah, so right now we just wanted to get this part done, but we are absolutely looking into getting some merchandise for other movies done. Um, probably just a little more time, but we will. And yes, the Kincaid shirts are happening. For sure. Yeah. I mean, yes, I for we, sure. We recently found the designs so we can now reference yes. them from our, uh, from our, from our art department, I emailed yeah. Tracy. I was like, hey, Tracy, <laughs> do you have the designs? She's like, yeah. yeah I actually, I already have the design on the shirt too. The, the specific green color we had for it, I found the company that we had ordered them from before, but they were out. So I just kind of put it on hold because it was a very different green from the other place that we ordered our Gabriel's Inferno shirts for. Just a little side note. So yeah, that side they note. are coming out. It's a great side note. And for people who don't know, um, when we first opened the Shopify store, uh, we had yet to have an office, so Tosca was sending, before, this was during, I think it was during Driven, you were sending, I want to say, like 100 to almost 200 orders every morning before you went to set. Like, you were packaging them themselves, Ridiculous. your kids were, like, <laughs> helping you stuff, but it was, you came to set one day, and I handed you a coffee, and you were like, oh, yeah, I just, I've been up for a little while now, I had to send some t-shirts, and I'm like, what? On yeah. top of everything else, you were sending t-shirts. I would I would pack them up at night and in the morning I'd put them in the car and then I would drive to set on the way to set I would stop at the post box post office and I would drop off all these packages and then continue on it was yeah that yeah. was how we, that that was my garage I love it I'm happy I took that off your plate because you're already doing a lot <laughs> um and uh another question Allie is uh a woman named Nancy asks if we could get shirts in size 4XL and 5XL, which we recently added 3XL, but I imagine there are there are still some fans of romance who are slightly larger sizes. I know. Yeah. I definitely would fit in a 4XL too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. That yeah, that's okay. not a problem. And yeah, I'm I'm trying to uh, pick out the shirts that do offer more and more sizes. So that's that's not a problem. We'd be happy to. Um, uh, Christina asks, uh, are you guys on TikTok? And if so, are you guys liking it? <laughs> we, are, we are. Um, on a personal note, I spend way too much time looking at TikTok at night. It's oh, so no. fun. It's so fun, you guys. I can't stop. Oh my God. And I love all the moms getting on there now and they use the hashtags like over 30, over 40, and all the teens are getting pissed off. <laughs> They're on well, there. It's so good. It's so good. Um, funny. But yeah, now I passion have to do it. It's, it's so good. Um, yes. So Passion Flicks does have an account now. You can follow us and we will follow you. And we love, if you want to send us some, if you want to tag us, or if you even want to send them to us, Haley, our uh, unofficial tiktoker founding member is one of my favorites but she sends them to me she'll direct message them to me on instagram and that's why we keep posting them every day because they're so funny yeah and we, yeah so if you're on there please let us know my uh my roommate my roommate who's a little bit older than me is on tiktok and my other roommate and i are not <laughs> but she said that she feels she's 31 and she feels like 
how our moms were when they joined Facebook. Suddenly exactly. we didn't want to be on Facebook anymore. And now all the older generations are joining TikTok and all the kids are like, no, get off. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's great. But yeah, your mom has TikTok, like Tosca. So. <laughs> My mom's like a TikTok star now. It's crazy. She's got, she's got yeah. so many followers. She's doing really well. She hops right on each trend. It's 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 and then she has to teach me it's just how sad it is <laughs> but I kind of love that you can then be like ma show me your ways I know yeah I love that um and then Allie uh we got a lot of questions about any kind of passion con updates I don't know if yes you just say. Okay. uh yes yeah. so um we are looking at alternative dates for passion con right now um we will put out an update as soon as possible so please just give us um a week or so to get everything in order. But yes, at this time we are looking for alternative dates. Um, it, it just seems like it's gonna be a little bit difficult for people to make the trip based off the feedback I've received from a lot of you. And we wanna make sure that everybody is um, feeling comfortable and safe. And, um, you know, we just wanna make sure everybody's really happy with how it goes. So we'll keep you posted um, and we'll let you know the news as soon as we have it. Cool. Um, and finally, some questions about development, which you can answer too, T, because I'm only recently doing this, but <laughs> we've been optioning books for a while now. Um, uh, Ari asks, how do you choose a book to option? Has there been a crazy way that someone has gotten a book to you? Um, there hasn't been any crazy way, like there hasn't been some random person on the street throwing me a book or... <laughs> weird things like that. We've had a, a, someone mail in a book before, um, but a book for somebody else, which was nice. They were like, here's a copy if you wanted to read it. I love this author. Um, but mostly we, I do a lot of research on Goodreads and I keep track of what you guys comment about. And then I read a lot myself. So I try to, I try to have a to be read, to be read list <laughs> that I get through every week. And um, as I read books and as I fall in love with them, I make recommendations to T. And then she says, yeah, go for it make the contract and the offer and then we go on from there um so it's kind of how that process happens right T? yeah um well this morning speaking about a crazy way um somebody a random person has found uh, has sent a book to us um via my mom's fan page so <laughs> basically what? they they like how do we get to passion flicks they, they found my mom's fan page, emailed my mother's fan page, and she just sent it to me this morning. And she's like, I'm not sure. They asked me to pass this along to you. So we oh. have one. I don't know who's, I don't know who it is or yeah. what it is, but I'll forward it to you, Lauren. And uh, that, yeah, that's the yeah. way that I'm like, wow, you, you contacted me through my mom's fan page. That's so funny. <laughs> you know what? That we is. Do, we read all the comments. We read all the comments and messages that come in, and I, and I use those comments just for me for fun reading. So, um, yeah. and I, and Allie will even sometimes she'll be like, "Hey, this author's been popping up a lot on our feed," or or you know mm -hmm. stuff like that. I'll get texts from Allie at like eleven at night, like, "Hey, we, is this author on our list?" And I'm like, "No, but I'll check her out." Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. Somebody actually just yeah, I started reading because somebody I think in our lounge said, "Read the Italian." Um, um, yeah, I'm just gonna say it's pretty nice so far. <laughs> it's now, see? Well, now we have. I'm very. I'm in the beginning. <laughs> well, and so Gemma asks, do we all throw out like a book into the ring and take a vote? Um, like, do we have a mini Passion Flicks book club to decide? And I would say, yeah, we do. We definitely constantly talk about. I remember, and especially in the beginning of me me doing development, I gave like a book to Margie and a book to Jennifer and a book to you, T. And like, if you have time, read it and let me know what you think and we'll see what we can do. Yeah. So yeah. That, is, that is it. Normally, you know, we're getting to the point now where a lot of the time I don't have the time to read as many books as Lauren does. Um, so <laughs> we're at the point where it's like Ellie and Lauren will come to me and be like, these are the great books that we've read recently. And I'm like, okay. And then they tell me the story and where it would take place and how we'd be able to film it. Um, and when, and generally speaking at that point, they're so in love with those books. And I'm like, great, let's see if the author will let us make it. And then, um, and then I go home and I, I'm trying to read them as quickly as possible so that we can have a, an educated conversation with the author. Yeah. You've, you've, uh, you started reading the Amy Benson series, which is one. Oh, great. One of the folks you're getting through that fast. <laughs> I love it. Well, so and the story about that series—that's kind of the first series that I 
I recommended to Tosca because I was still working as your assistant at the time. And it was one of those moments where you didn't have time to read, but I think I had time to read. So you're like, hey, just got these books in. Do you mind reading them and seeing what it would do? And I'm so used to that because I used to work development at uh, Paramount when I was just an intern. Like we'd get a book or we'd get a script and that was our job for the day to get that done and give coverage to the assistants so that they could tell their boss about it. Um, so I read those books. <laughs> I read the first one that day. I think I read the, the next two of the series the second day. And so by the time the third day came around, I was starting the fourth book and I'm like, hey, Tosca, just so you know, I read these really fast. But I think we should get them. And I was like, I can see them as a TV series. Like I can totally picture it. And she's like, you know what? Yeah, let's stop do it. it. And now, and I'm obsessed. Like I just can't stop reading them. I'm like, uh, yeah. I mean, it's but a huge relief because I was terrified that you'd start reading them and you'd <laughs> No, but I trust, I trust you, I trust you both, I trust all of the people here that read books, and, um, but the, the, um, the really awesome thing is that, you know, I now have this, this great TBR um, list of books, although I've read all of them that we've optioned, so, um, so that, that's always, uh, you know, a hard thing to do, because we option a lot of books, um, but uh, yeah, it's so much fun, I mean, I, rarely do we ever go wrong, where we're like, what? How are we going to make this into a movie? We'll always find a way. And uh, I'm just so grateful to the authors to let us do it. Yeah. No, it's awesome. Um, we also had somebody ask if we take book recommendations from fans. And if so, from the books you've already optioned slash made, how many were fan recommendations? Um, we, we take tons of fan recommendations from people, whether you email them to info or you email them to me or you comment on a post. We try to keep track and then add it to the list. I know that Wait With Me, which we recently optioned by Amy Dawes, was one that caught my attention because it was a post that someone made in the founding members lounge and then a bunch of people started commenting on it. And I started reading it and like, the first few pages in, it's about a romance novelist working in a tire shop. It's Amy Dawes' story about how she got re-inspired to write while being in a tire shop. So she based a character off of that. Um, and she talks about how one of the, one of the author in the book's books was picked by Passion Flicks to be made into a movie. And I was like, Tosca, she says Passion Flicks in her book. And Tosca's like, get it, we need it. Um, and I also finished reading the book and I loved it. And it takes place in Colorado, which is a place after your own heart tea. So it was just, it was a match made in heaven in our eyes. So we of course had to get it, but it was all because a fan was talking about it at the time. And so I picked it up. Yeah, great. So it definitely happens. Um, another question is, are the quickies written specifically for passion flicks or are they already based on published shorts and novellas? Um, and I know Tosca, you had a couple of authors write some specific for you or they sent you word docs that they had made into shorts but hadn't yet published or something like that. Like we have a couple of those, right? Yeah, we had that for, um, well, for same time next year, Jody Ellen Mulpas actually wrote that script um, and then wrapped up in you was it was initially a, a conversation that Joni had um, with Brooke and Ella about making that um, making a short story um, and then so it initially was Christmas and then changed to Valentine's Day and then we were able to make it for Christmas and but they published the Valentine's Day one so so you know sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work as well but but it's still a great story and we're very fortunate but um, uh, and I got to direct that so much fun <laughs> um, and uh, but yeah, so, but most of the time we look for short stories to turn into, um, to turn into quickies, but very much so open to any story that when an author pitches us, whether they've published it or not. Yeah, um, for sure. We were, we're all about that quickie content, um, especially because probably moving forward with getting out of the pandemic, quickies might be something we can start making sooner than features. Yeah. So exactly. that's something we're keeping in mind for sure. Um, another question, Anna asks, will you consider doing a sports romance movie in the future? Sure. Um, for sure. I know I've read a couple. I just need to finish pitching them to T. <laughs> um, but yeah, that would be super fun. Uh, another person asks, would you consider adapting a book into a series that's long and maybe comes out once a week? Uh, and this person, uh, Christina was like, I would just love a weekly passion um, flicks content. And I'm like, well, we have our passion pod. <laughs> For now, but yeah. Um, so just, you know, just basically what, what, you know, of course, I would love to release a, a series every week, an episode every week. I mean, that would be incredible. But um, to shoot an hour of content takes about, uh, to, so 
it, it takes about six months. <laughs> so, so it's not, it's not something that that's easily done. So if we were going to shoot an hour of content, we would, that we release every week, we would have to actually shoot all 12 hours, you know, if we're going to do 12 weeks or something, um, we would have to shoot 12 hours of content and shooting 12 hours of content would take us longer than six months. And, um, and the post-production process on that is, is significant. So basically, and it would also cost a fortune. It would cost six times more than any of our features. So, um, so that's something to keep in mind. Definitely as we grow, that would be amazing. I think that would be probably something we could even start with on the Amy Benson story and um, because it's a great way of doing it. And it might not be hour long, then might, maybe it'll be 30 to 45 minutes long, but we will be able to um, release something slowly. But um, I mean, it's a great idea and, and we'd love to be able to do it. it just, it's just about resources at the end of the day. Totally. Cool. And then still small. Still small. We're, we're still weeks. growing, guys. There's we're only four of us. Years old. Just, yeah. just so you guys know, we're, we're just over two years old. We've done 12 movies. This, so. yeah, this, this September 2020, so the September 1st is our three year anniversary. Um, so coming up soon. <laughs> and then uh, the last question uh, is asked by Connie. She says, Are there any books that you would make into a movie that would film in the South? She like wanted to know Louisiana or Mississippi or Georgia. Mirror well, did Hollywood. Yeah. In Georgia. Well, Louisiana, we're filming um, Wicked. Yeah. yeah, and it takes place, yeah. Yeah. Um, Georgia, I'd love to shoot in Georgia. I'm trying to convince everybody to let me take um, Passion Flicks to Georgia just for a little bit. I really enjoyed filming in Augusta and Madison when we filmed um, Hollywood Dirt. Um, and so, uh, you know, we should uh, maybe we'll go out there again to Georgia. Um, and then um, we're looking at Texas. So Texas for, you know, we have a bunch of movies that, that take place in Texas. Um, Amy Benson and uh, Sugar Daddy. And mm -hmm. I'm looking over there because that's our list of movies. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, where else? Um, we hopefully, um, for, very possibly for um, A Lover's Vow and A Man's Promise, we'll go back to Florida um, because that's where the house is. So, right. you know, it's just, yeah uh, sure well let's go to the south sounds good <laughs> um and then one last question i thought i think somebody asked but i forgot to ask earlier um for all of us is what is uh your favorite passion flicks movie my favorite passion flicks movie yeah gabriel's inferno ah, gabriel's inferno snap <laughs> yeah i have to say wrapped up in you just because i love that oh movie. it is oh well, and that's you a quickie that. if you ask me my favorite quickie I would say wrapped up in you. Yeah. My favorite quickie is um yes, also wrapped up in you. Um, but I mean it's so hard, right? Because Hollywood Dirt was my first and I loved that movie and the protector was the first time that we got to go and work in England and that was cool. And um, you know, each one means so much to me. Dirty Sexy Saint, I mean it's David and Jordan at the end of the day, the nicest human beings in the on the planet. Um, and was so much fun to film there. Um, so I'm like, there's a special place in, in my heart for every single one that we have made. And I'm really fortunate that we've got to work with so many incredible people and so many wonderful places and such great stories. And, um, but yeah, Gabriel's Inferno, um, I think we've knocked it out of the park on this one. Oh, for sure. People are going <laughs> to, I've said this many a time now, people are going to lose their shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's super cool. exciting. Um, well, that's all the questions I have for us ladies. Um, yeah. Thank you for, uh, for everyone who tuned in to our special Ask Us Anything edition of Passion Pod. And um, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the YouTube comments or on any of our social media posts, um, and we'll try to get to them some point in the future. And uh, I love you ladies, and I miss you. And <laughs> I'm gonna and uh, finish editing part three of Gabriel's Inferno. See, kicking ass, taking names, it's gonna be great. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. All right. Bye, guys.